Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here at Health Data Palooza, and joining me right now, I have Peter Orzag. He runs North America for Lazard. Yep. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Okay, so we're going to just jump right in Let's because right before this interview started, you said to me that you are skeptical about the consumerization of healthcare. So let's break that down. Tell me why you're skeptical. Okay, here's the issue. Most healthcare comes from very high-cost patients, okay. and those high-cost patients are never going to be consumer-driven, cost-sharing, it's not the, pur the purpose of insurance is to protect them, so we are going to. The other consumers, yes, you could apply some cost sharing and kind of consumer driven healthcare, but the evidence suggests, first of all, they account for a very small share of the total, so it doesn't really move the needle, total spending, I should say. Uh -huh. It doesn't move the needle that much. And then, secondly, more importantly, the evidence suggests people don't really do it that much. So there was a great study on um, lower limb MRIs, for example. People went to past six lower cost MRI providers before winding up at the one that they actually went to. And the one they actually went to was because their doctor recommended that one. Okay. So I am, it's not that it's harmful, it's just not going to move the needle as much as influencing why your doctor is recommending X versus Y. Okay, so you think that, I guess, the, the solution for cost here, driving down costs, might be going after the physicians first? Is that what you're saying? Uh, what I'm saying is most healthcare is determined by what the physicians are recommending, and so if you want to change healthcare, you've got to be affecting what the physicians are recommending. Okay, so let's ask this then. What do we do to bring down the cost of healthcare? So I think there are a couple things. So on the physicians, you can uh, use more clinical decision support, you can do more um, analyses of why phys some physicians are recommending more imaging than others. Mass General, for example, just by doing risk-adjusted imaging rates by showing doctors like you're ordering a lot more than some other doctor, they were able to bring down the total by 10 percent. So there's a lot that can be done on that. There's another promising area which is the evidence suggests that post-acute care in particular, so what happens especially at skilled nursing facilities, mm -hmm. is an area that is uh, where we're, we're getting the lowest return on our dollar and so we could get more value from there. But I think there's a lot of room for improvement as evidenced by the fact that costs vary significantly across the country, across hospitals even within the same city, and then across doctors within a hospital, none of which seems to have anything to do with healthcare quality or the um, beneficiary's health status. I think it's so interesting that we started the, your take on the on bending the cost curve here because this is a conversation that I've had with a lot of different people. Yeah. I mean, and we're starting to see, I think, like you know, other other ways for the model is starting to change. So we're seeing a lot of like vertical integration, and I know that that's something that you're excited about as well. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are there. Well, I think the evidence suggests that there are some benefits to vertical integration, aligning um, not only incentives but the data flows so that you have clinical data, claims data, and pharmacy data all in one place mm -hmm. and you get more insight from that. <laughs> and we advise that, so I'm biased. Um, so biased. I'm biased. But take, for example, Kaiser Permanente, who we have mm -hmm. not advised. They have uh, something like 10 or 15% lower cost than other providers, and they have 8% of total Medicare Advantage beneficiaries, over 80% of the five-star rated ones. So their quality is also higher. So as far as like, I mean, what other organizations, other health systems might be able to do? I mean, like, because these, these, these solutions for kind of bending the cost curve are, are, seem a little bit complex. So is there anything that like a health system, if you're on an innovation team in a health system, that you can do to impact the way that your, your you can impact your domain of, of where the healthcare cost is coming in? Like, what's your advice? Well, it obviously depends on you know, what kind of health system you're well, in sure. and where you are. But there is a lot... Broadly speaking, is there, is there something that you would recommend? Like, I, for example, I spoke with Atul Butte earlier, and he said a lot of times health systems are not using the data that they have yeah. to even make decisions. So, I mean, do you have an, a, any kind of general advice like that? Yeah, so I think there's a lot more that can be done on physician variation. So that is using the data on why doctors are behaving in different ways. And what the other piece to this is as the payment to health systems to hospitals and physician offices change and they bear more risk themselves, they're naturally more interested in, well, why is that doctor ordering so, more, so many more tests when we're paying for it? As far as what has you excited, I mean, like, what do you think about, like, I mean, what do you think as far as the future trends go? What, what has you most excited about what has the greatest potential to impact change in healthcare? So there, this is a phenomenally exciting time to be working in healthcare because you have the combination of the system is digitizing so we have or it's now digitized so we have a lot more data 
the cost of computing has plummeted and new techniques in machine learning and artificial intelligence is opening up new insight. And then the payment system is changing, so incentives are changing. You put the three of those together and you know, healthcare 2025 or healthcare 2030, I think is a really exciting um, um, thing. And frankly, the, the problem is going to be making sure that everyone has access to the advances that we're going to experience because another challenge is the growing gradient in life expectancy and, and health status by socioeconomic status. But in terms of what we're able to deliver in 2025 or 2030, I think the future is very bright. Do you think that we're going to have more of these, um, like these, like CVS, Aetna, where the the alignment of the, of the way that care is delivered and the data that we're able to collect? Like we, you had talked about the vertical integration. Do you, do you think we're going to see more of that? Is that like a trend that we're headed toward, or do you think that this is kind of like a little blip in time? No, I think it's a trend. I mean, what you're seeing is all of the major payers are exploring different ways of vertically integrating. They're adopting somewhat different um, approaches, but. Uh, they are all very interested in doing this, and so I think you'll see that continue. What kind of role do you think the consumer technology companies are going to play in this? Uh, I think there's a lot in the wellness space for mm -hmm. consumer technology companies, and then that will integrate into um, the more formal EHR, EMR. Uh, uh, and so I think the, the challenge, again, we're going to have is for highly motivated people who are running every day and taking great care of themselves, the ability to do that is going to get yet better. And so the question becomes, they're already generally healthy. How can we use some of these new technologies for the people who are struggling a little bit more and might not you know, love the output from their Fitbit or their Garmin or whatever? Um, but how do you use the new technologies to encourage uh, healthier behavior where a lot of the problem is, which is where um, there's unhealthy behavior today. Peter, thanks so much for joining us. It's such a, it's so refreshing to get your perspective. I, I like that you're a contrarian on the consumerization of healthcare piece. I think that's really interesting. Thanks, thanks so much. Me. I'm Jessica Damasa with WTF Health here at Health Data Palooza. Thanks for joining us.